Welcome back, friends. Thanks for being here. Buckle up and subscribe, because it's going to be fun. QRP Guys Digital DSB Transceiver Kit. Coming right up. All right, I don't usually start with uh, documentation. Usually I just kind of dive right in. I mean, who needs instructions, right? But while looking through this kit before I pulled the trigger and purchased it, I took a look at their documentation and it's actually really good. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes to uh, go over their documentation and talk about all those different things. So as you can see right off the bat, this is a solder kit. I mean, that's there's no getting past that. And uh, that's why I got it. Um, if you like to wind toroids, there are six toroids right there. And and uh, it's a pretty elegant design. Everything's laid out very nicely. Um, all the components are well labeled on the silk screen, these little white letters everywhere. Uh, nothing seems to be too overly crowded. It doesn't seem to be too terribly difficult to put together. It seems like somebody actually put some thought into the assembly of it. Uh, all of the ports are on one side of the board, which is nice. If you've used a Raspberry Pi before and tried to set it up inside of a, you know, like a desktop type environment, you've got cables going out every side of that board and it's kind of annoying. So this having the cables come out one side is really nice. Uh, you can switch between the 20 meter band, the 30 meter band, and the 40 meter band. And if you take a close look at it, um, it's probably hard to make out the crystals, but this one is seven, this one is 10, and this one is 14. Um, and the toroids are a little bit different. Uh, the toroids on the 30 and 40 look to be about the same, but there's more turns on the 40 than there is on the 30. Uh, looking over on the board, there are two more surprise toroids, uh, a couple of transistors. This looks like a relay, a couple of ICs, some output jacks, like we mentioned, and a whole bunch of resistors and capacitors and things. So nothing out of the ordinary, nothing scary there. Um, there is a nice list of the capacitors and their locations and what type they are. And then uh, scrolling past that, there is a placement diagram and there is a checklist of what parts to put in and the order that they suggest that you put them in. So we will follow that along and see how well that works out. Uh, scrolling down past that, there's a little bit of advice on how to put these guys on. They get a little hot and they want to make sure that there's some heat sinking going on there and there's some contact with that metal plate to transfer some of that heat out. Information on winding some of the toroids and some more checklists for the daughter boards. And then finally, what was pretty cool also is some testing so that you can sort of walk through in a step-by-step -step fashion and figure out uh, what it is that you did right or maybe even what it is that you did wrong. And then there is some tuning here that you can do. So all that is extremely helpful and things that you don't really see much in other documentation. Even how to hook it into your laptop and get it running. And then it gets into some theory of operation and some details on how and why this thing works the way it works. And you're presented with a nice copy of the schematic and some testing of the harmonics. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed with the documentation. It's 13 pages, so it's not too hard to digest. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so. Open up the uh, wonderful shipping container that it came in. It is fairly decently wrapped. No, no concerns there. Wrapped in bubble wrap. So, I can keep that for later. Kit even includes the zip ties, so that's fairly complete. Open up the bag of parts. And there's the board that we saw in the image. It actually looks a little bit smaller in the hand than it does on the screen, but I did have the screen zoomed in as much as I could to make it easier for you guys to see. So there is the board. Some header pins, right angle header pins. These are the daughter boards. And the boards themselves don't appear to have any differences on them, so that's good. Just go for it. Let's just dump some of that stuff out. Okay. Zip ties, zip ties, zip ties, zip ties. Plenty of zip ties. Some more header pins. Make a nice pile of what we think are resistors until we find out that they aren't. And it was all just a big trick. Capacitors. Oh, that's some small writing. These are 104s. These are 104s. What do you want to bet these are 104s also? These look like 103s. Okay. Oh, here's some more. 22s. 331. Feet. We have feet. 
So this is a four foot long kit. Some magnet wire in green, some magnet wire in yellow, two IC sockets, two ICs, more resistors, more capacitors. Can't really make that one out. And that one looks like 401. This is the relay that I was talking about earlier. Straighten out the pin on that. All right, yellow toroids, red toroids, yellow, red, black, black, red, red, two headphone jacks, power jack, BNC, more resistors, rubber band for some reason. Maybe that was rubber band that was holding all the uh, zip ties together. A couple of crystals, should be three. Where's the third one? There it is, three crystals. More resistors. This one says 151 on the capacitor. Transistor, 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 capacitor, capacitor. This is a 7809, so looks like a voltage regulator of some kind. Resistor, 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 resistor. Some diodes, more transistors, trimmers, another capacitor. So what you do when you can't read these guys, and this one's not bad, this one says 4-7. If you can't read these guys, you go through process of elimination. There is only one blue one, and if I wind up at the end of the stack with a whole bunch of them labeled and a small handful that aren't labeled, then I'll know which one it is by process of elimination. We have two nuts and one screw. These are the headers that work with the daughter boards, another transistor, a jumper wire, a jumper pin, and depending on which part of the world you're in, those are actually called shunts or jumpers. These are two different LEDs, and they don't really indicate what color they are in the diagram. In the diagram, in the picture we saw in the previous manual, they uh, look like they were yellow and green or orange and green. So maybe we'll see. And some more capacitors. All right, that's a lot of stuff to put together. So what I'm going to do is get out a sorting tray and sort some of these parts into the tray, and then I am going to. Um, do a little trick that I learned with the resistors and probably with these capacitors to get them sorted out. So stay tuned. All right, don't tell my wife, but I stole her muffin tin. So I got the parts sorted here that I can sort into this, put the circuit boards and the headers on there, and then I can very conveniently set that off to the side and dig into these resistors. So let's get working on that. All right, so even though these look like your typical average run-of-the-mill resistors, these are actually inductors. And you get one of these per daughter board and then one goes on the main board. So we will put these off to the side. Okay, so a little hard to see on camera, but essentially what I did was group them by colors, and then I went through with the meter and measured out their measurements. All of these guys have a little bit of built-in tolerance, so it's not gonna be an exact science. Um, that's why you get numbers like 4.56 here and 2.8 here, but you get the point. Um, I'm not colorblind, but I probably, like you, have a little bit of trouble telling the silver banding from the gold banding and I find it's just easier just to do this up front and get it out of the way than it is to potentially put one of these guys in wrong and have to go through the trouble to fix any kind of mistake. So this could still be wrong at the end of the day but it's a lot less wrong than it would have been otherwise and then I also tried um, individual pieces of tape here and then one long piece of tape there and I went back to individual pieces of tape because the individual pieces of tape worked better. Um, this one, when I put it down, it curled the paper up, which caused stuff to move. And now these aren't going anywhere, and I can move them around and use them as necessary and uh, stick them with my parts tray. So next is to do the capacitors. I'm going to do very close to the exact same thing with the capacitors. Make sure I have all of them and uh, make sure they're all sorted by the correct values and get moving right along on that. 
All right, so capacitors are all sorted out off camera. You saw the process with the resistors. Capacitors are done, resistors are done, and tray full of parts. On the capacitors, um, there are a couple of these, uh, I can't remember if these are radial or axial off the top of my head, but they're there. Um, I didn't really worry about those. Those are very, very clearly marked and actually kind of even human readable at times. Um, so I'm not too worried about them, but uh, these guys here obviously don't have a whole lot of writing on them that you could read. And so there we go with that. All right, that wraps this one up. Uh, stay tuned for part two where we start putting the discrete components on. Thanks again.